Hey everyone, Matt Dollinger here from SI.com, here with college basketball producer David Gardner. David, let's get right to it. We're talking booms or busts in the 2014 NBA draft, starting with the most polarizing player of all, Doug McDermott. In your eyes, boom or bust? I think Doug McDermott's a boom. I think that uh, the NBA puts a high value on scores, and Doug McDermott has shown that he can score from anywhere on the court. He can drive to the basket, he can post up, he can shoot from 25 feet and beyond. I think he's the best pure shooter in the draft. He is a hard worker. I think he'll make it in the NBA. Of course, there are concerns about his defensive play, but uh, I think there are plenty of people in the NBA who don't give it their all on defense, but are scorers and are making a great living for themselves. That is true. The rest of what you said, not so much, though. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Doug McDermott, I just don't see it. You know, everyone's talking about him being the exception to the rule. I just see him being a repeat of things we've already seen before. It was just a couple of years ago, there was a six foot eight forward who could shoot, averaged almost 30 points per game, over 40% from three point range. His name was Adam Morrison. He was drafted by the Bobcats. That didn't exactly work. It's funny because McDermott is actually being talked about being drafted by Charlotte as well, the same franchise that chose Morrison. I don't know if they think they're going to have better luck the second time around, but. You know, I just don't see McDermott translating to the NBA. I, I think Nick Stauskas is going to be a better NBA player. Mm. I just don't quite see McDermott. Got another player for you, Kyle Anderson of UCLA. Now, there's no question that this guy is an NBA caliber athlete, but he was kind of a tweener. He played point guard, but he's six feet, nine inches tall. Where do you see him going in the NBA draft? Well, I think he's probably the most intriguing player in the first round. I think he'll go mid to late in the first round. But I'm unfortunately going to call him a bust, which it hurts me to do because I love his game. The reason why is I feel like Kyle Anderson could be put in the wrong situation so easily. He's got such a diverse skill set that everyone's going to think he could help their team. But really, Kyle Anderson needs to be in a system like the Spurs, where passing is put at a premium, where there's things that he can do besides scoring that are going to be appreciated. If you draft Kyle Anderson, ask him to score on his own and create one-on-one -on -one situations, I don't think it's going to work. What do you think? I think that he brings a lot of skills to the table that aren't there with other prospects. I think for a six foot nine guy being able to handle the basketball as he has, he played point guard a lot for UCLA, but I think people peg him too much in that point guard role. They also played him off the ball. He learned to score off the ball. He moves well without the ball. I think he's really going to be a terrific player in the NBA. I think it'll be, of course, to his advantage if he ends up with a team like the Spurs who sure. wouldn't want to play in that kind of system. But I think that he'll be able to succeed because of his versatility. All right, finally, another little bit of a polar rising player guy who's expected to go in the lottery Julius Randall boomer bust I'd say boom for Julius Randall uh, just look at what he did in college he averaged a double double I mean that's pretty tremendous he has a real natural feel as a rebounder I think he'll be more of a small forward in the NBA but he's definitely still a very powerful presence down in the post he can score almost at will down there and he was really the most mature and best player on that Kentucky team that was full of McDonald's All-Americans full of future first round NBA draft picks I think he's got the potential to be a really good staple down low player we were talking the other day I compared him to maybe an Al Horton if he fills out a little bit more. I think he's not quite the physique of Al Horford, but I think he's got that kind of dominant post presence. I'm going soft boom. I'm not quite drinking the uh, the gravy quite like you are. Do you drink gravy? I don't think I do drink not gravy. drink gravy. Yeah. No, uh, you know, Julius, my doctor told me to stop. You yeah. should. It's not good for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, Julius Randle measured in at under six foot eight at the combine. He's got a really long wingspan at seven foot, which I think will help compensate. But he wasn't a dominant player at Kentucky. He did average a double double, but you know, he didn't even attempt double digit shots in almost half his games. He, he's kind of a guy who does blend in a little bit. I think he's going to have a successful NBA career, kind of similar to other Kentucky power forwards we've seen in the NBA, like Patrick Patterson, Terrence Jones, maybe somewhere in between those two guys. I think he's going to be a solid player, but I think if there's a team expecting him to be an all-star and a little bit of a double-double machine, they could be disappointed. David, thanks so much for joining me. For SI.com, I'm Matt Dollinger.